Hello everyone, this is Adnan with CanApps training video series. In this video, I'm going to show you SCCM 2012 uh, basic configuration and client installation. So we'll go through some basic configuration in which we're going to go through uh, boundary, boundary groups, uh, their basic understanding. Then we're going to uh, talk about SCCM clients, uh, client installation methods in which we're going to see client push install and configuration. Then we're going to go through log files. We're also going to see uh, uh, an excellent utility that uh, that comes with SCCM 2012 or previous SCCM versions as well. It was it is CM Trace utility to view logs, and at the end we're gonna verify SCCM agent on clients. So let's start with this. Now, first of all, my environment is I have a DC server 2012, then I have a SCCM server, which is server 2012. SCCM server also has uh, SQL 2012, then I have client number one, and then I have client number three. Uh, both are Windows 7 clients. So, first of all, I'm going to log into SCCM server. Um, SCCM server with my standard password. Now in order to launch SCCM uh, what we need is we, we're gonna need to run SCCM console which is this one. If you can't find the console here what you can do is you can always go back to start and find the console right here which is this configuration manager console now once the console starts what happens is the console always connect to a SQL database and SQL database is installed on the same computer and here is the management uh, administration console for SQL server which is called SQL server management console if I open this one as well uh, being a CCM admin we should know what this is it is SQL uh, SQL Server 2012 Management Console. It is called Management Studio. And here we just connect to the same database. It says SCCM Server Connect. It should let us connect to the database. Within the databases, um, it has few databases. This is your SCCM database and some other databases. Most of the time we don't have to do anything here other than just to make sure that this is green and this is green. If this is not green, so meaning if it is stopped like this, then SCCM cannot work. So for now we'll just leave it as is. But we need to remember this is a SQL administration console which is called Management Studio. Now within SCCM, this is the main console of SCCM. CCM and and just like in Windows 7 we have control panel here we have administration uh, in administration these are all of the options if you go to monitoring these options are changed then software library where you have other options assets and compliance so we start with administration the very first thing that we need to do is to create a boundary now boundary is very very important for SCCM in boundaries we have we configure all our subnets with in the network so if it is a completely new environment your first boundary will be where your server is for example uh, on this server my main IP address or subnet is 192 which is this one 10.10.10.10 .10 .10 .10. so my first boundary will be for this now it depends on different network different configuration so my main boundary is this 10.10.10.0 .10 .10 um, now in uh, my previous video and during the classes we discuss uh, boundaries in huge detail here I'm just showing you basic configuration so first of all you need to have a boundary and boundary is the network where SCCM can manage clients so if your your network is uh, spread across 10 sites and only one boundary one subnet is configured here which means SCCM can only manage that one boundary now boundary itself can't do anything uh, in order to create a boundary it's really easy all you need to know is the subnet for example I'm creating a subnet for CanApps 
building two floor two so boundaries can be just one IP subnet they can be Active Directory based or they can be IP address range start from one IP address for example if I say uh, I need to create a boundary for 10.10.20.10 .10 .10 to 10.10.20 10 dot hundred so this will be one boundary now boundaries has to be part of a boundary group so um, so here we have so so in reality in this virtual lab this is the only boundary that will be used uh, these other boundaries won't be used actually actually so this one is hundred yes these are the so this is my main boundary here now this should be part of a boundary group you can go into the properties go to bind boundary group this boundary is not part of any boundary group now let me just make sure the IP address of this machine because I doubt it's 10 I think this is uh, the IP address we're using is 192 let me just make sure the IP address on this machine is it's 10 okay so we're using 10 so this is my main boundary and now if I go to a boundary group within the boundary group all I have is 100 which is not my subnet let me just make sure logging into a DC and make sure that if I am configuring the right subnet within the boundary group so this is my DC and here if I go to IP config it is 10 as well so yes my real boundary is 10 so within this Toronto HQ uh, I'm gonna go and add so within within this is my boundary boundary the boundary I can see this and boundary group uh, is the one that will be used with deployments and and uh, the distribution point so in this boundary group that I have Toronto since 192.168.100 doesn't exist in this virtual network I don't need to add it uh, so what I'm gonna do is remove this entry from here and within this boundary group or oh, let me just completely delete this boundary group now boundaries are not are uh, cannot work without boundary group so I'm gonna go to boundary group and boundary group I'm gonna create a boundary for my Toronto HQ within Toronto HQ I need to add a boundary and this is my boundary um, now I named it Montreal I would need to change it to Toronto let's see if I can change it Toronto and here my network is 10.10.10.0 subnet mask 255 yes I'm using a class address with C class subnet because I'm gonna use this one subnet um, if this is done let me make sure that it is part of that boundary group it is part of the boundary group because the second thing after boundary this is setting up the SCCM network is setting up discovery methods so within discovery methods what we need to do is um, there are six discovery methods for us discovery group discovery system discovery user heartbeat heartbeat discovery is one that is always on heartbeat discover it's it is it configures the interval between configuration manager client to periodically send discovery data records to the site so this is a heartbeat between client and SCCM server this has to be on um, forest discovery is used to to build your boundaries according to Active Directory sites so we don't need this if you ever need it what it would do is if you enable it so if you go here and enable it what it will do it will automatically create boundaries based on Active Directory site so I'm gonna um, so I just closed it I'm not if you need to discover groups we would need to enable this 
if you need to discover only computers we need to discover system discovery which is on so we'll be discovering computers within this network uh, based on where the boundary is and if you need to discover users we will discover enable this for now I have network discovery on which I don't need it actually for now um, so I'm gonna need just system discovery and heartbeat discovery now when you do a system discovery always always make sure that you add an OU where you need to run this discovery if you for example if I need to add a certain OU that this discovery should run against only this OU or maybe this OU then uh, so here what I did I created this this discovery against the complete domain so it will discover everything within this domain so now discovery is done boundary is done boundary groups are done now since it is all done all I need to do I will just run a full complete discovery go to boundary so this is initial configuration done now the next thing that I need to do is I would need to go back to assets and compliance where the div discovered devices will appear in administration we did configurations whereas in assets and compliance we'll see the discovered devices which which are right here so as soon as the discovery runs it would go and try to discover everything within the network within that discovery so here it has discovered already client 3 actually this was already discovered DC was already discovered now what what is not discovered is SCCM client so I'll come back to this in a moment but before that the discovered clients are these and these are not only so when you start when you install a new SCCM server it would only show you this machine and this these are two default devices uh, uh, within SCCM uh, for now it's of no use but these are the real machines so this is my SCCM server discovered DC which is this one it is discovered and SCCM client 3 which is this one it's discovered now let's see SCCM DC it is client under client it says yes yes means that these all servers have agents they all have SCCM clients installed on them whereas on DC and server it is active on client 3 it is inactive which means client is there but somehow it is not active it is not sending back the heartbeat we need to troubleshoot that and fix that for now I'll just leave it as is but my first goal is discover client 1 so let's go to client 1 now it's not being discovered it could be many different reasons for example maybe it is sitting in a wrong boundary maybe it is in a wrong subnet maybe the subnet is not able to ping this so I'm gonna do just basic tests here so first my test is uh, pinging not this so I'm gonna just type here ping and here I'm gonna say ping cm client 1 it's not pinging but it's showing me the IP address so this is one thing let me ping client 3 client 3 is pinging which is this one so client 1 shows me this address now let me see this address on client 1 so I'll go back to client 1 and I'll go here go to the properties adopter and here I'll go to this one and see what is the IP address oh okay so there is no IP address on this so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first of all set up the IP address and IP address that I'm gonna set up is should be from the same subnet as the other servers so in this case let me give us IP address of 99 and subnet mask and DNS as you can see we need to do some deep down uh, or basic uh, TCP IP troubleshooting now since this is done all I need to do is run CMD and ping 10.10.10.10 this is my DC it's pinging let me try to ping by name 
Canips. Is it Canips? Uh, no, it is SCCMDC. SCCMDC is pinging. Let me ping the SCCM server. SCCM mm, server. That is pinging, but it's pinging to a IPv6 address. That could be an issue. Um, in order to resolve this, first of all, I need to do a few things. Um, I would need to go here and disable IPv6. So this is done. Secondly, I would go back here and I would flush DNS. Flush DNS. Uh, IP config flush DNS and thirdly I need to log into DC go to DNS and remove all IPv6 IP addresses so I'll go into DNS go to forward lookup zone DNS and here if there are any there are no IPv6 addresses so that's fine and here let's see if IPv6 is enabled on zero, Ethernet zero, it is enabled, but I'll disable it. Same thing goes for this, and this is all done. Let me try to ping now client one. Client one is still not pingable, so I'll go back to client one. Let me check one more thing that if maybe firewall is on, yes, firewalls are on on this let's turn off the firewalls and let me go back here and now it started as soon as I turned off the firewalls they started pinging now since it has started pinging let me go back in devices and try to refresh this oh yes as you can see automatically the discovery ran and now I can see this client so this client is now accessible from this now we're ready to push the client so let me stop this video because I don't want it to be a long video in the next video I'm gonna show you how to push a client how to do client settings thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next video thank you